Hi, I'm James from Oakgen. I'm the Business Ideas Specialist. Hi, I'm Angelique from Oakgen. I'm also the Marketing Mama. You can find me on Facebook under Marketing Mama. We are going to be live today talking on the online prosperity show with Prosper. We're really excited about it. Please come and definitely join us. We're talking about our six kids. That's right. I said six, six. kids. And the fact that we run a business and the fact that we run a dads in business network, which is super exciting. There are some marketing tips. So there are some business cash flow tips on there from James and myself, which is great. And there's lots of funny stuff in there, but I'm not going to run away. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today... I hope you've packed in a bit of lunch because I've got the dynamic duo, James and Angelique. James and Angelique, welcome to the show today. Thank you, Prosper. Thank you, Prosper. Fantastic. All right. So basically, if you're watching this show right now, you're probably a business person or you are looking to start and scale a business that's going to be profitable and enjoyable. And half the time, you might want to partner up with either a co-founder or somebody within your family or a partner. And most of the time, you want to be able to run that family business without killing each other. And that's the reason why we're talking to Angelique and James here today that have been running a couple of businesses that they're going to be talking about and also groups. And there is a surprising fact about them that they actually have a family of six that they look after all in their enterprising uh, endeavors there. So all of this, if you have been struggling to run a business and you probably don't have kids or you don't have all these overheads, these guys are going to show you how to do it and how they've been managing their day-to-day -day life. So as I said, I mean, if you're going to be finding an ideal co-founder or somebody who's going to be helping you out in the business, it is very difficult and sometimes a risky process. And if you end up staying with that person day to day and trying to figure out how you can also manage aspects that don't involve the business that also causes another headache. I mean, I could go on and on talking about this, but the couple is here and they're waiting uh, to dish out all the information that they actually have. I'm going to start off with you, James. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and what it is that you actually do and how you became um, the business ideas specialist. Okay, so thanks, Prosper. Um, I started off, um, I spent, what, almost 12 years in financial planning. Um, and before that, I was in service and sales-based roles, uh, working for other people for quite some time. Um, and what I found was that every employer I worked for, they kept coming to me, putting me on projects. It could be a week, from anywhere from a week long up to three months, where I wasn't doing what they employed me to do. They had me doing something completely different um, around business improvement, business transformation, customer uh, experience, and so on. And I got a really good um, basis for learning the little bits about business that most people don't think about, the things that make business really tick, and um, discovered that I really love dealing with the business strategy side of business. And then we discovered um, through some observations and talking with other people that a lot of businesses out there now, your standard small business is someone who leaves their employer thinking that they can do the same thing and three times as much straight away and um, don't, don't actually think about what it involves being self-employed. The reality is it takes up to two years to make the same level of income that you were earning when you were working with someone else and they don't think about it. And um, even when they do get to that level, they don't have a plan, they don't, they've missed stuff in their business. So um, there's always those little things that they don't think about. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And that's a really crucial uh, point that it actually takes two years for you to actually replace the income that you would have uh, left your previous employer uh, with in order for you to actually start having a happier existence. But obviously, James, it's not all you within this whole business. There is the brains behind it, uh, the marketing specialist herself, the lawyer, mom extraordinaire, and a whole lot of other credentials that come along with it. Angelique, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became the marketing mama. Thanks, Prosper. Um, fantastic introduction, can I just say. Uh, that's awesome, it plays to my ego really quite well, so thank you. Um, in marketing, I think we all have a little bit of an ego in marketing. Um, but anyway, it is about, you know, what I do in our business is I'm a marketing specialist. So I help small to micro businesses generally that are generally family run businesses look at their marketing strategy. So when I'm talking marketing strategy, I'm talking about the reasons why. So you want to go implement a Facebook ad campaign. You go, oh yeah, I'll spend 50 bucks on Facebook a day. But realistically, you need to look at that return on investment. You also need to look at your overheads and your cash flow, which is where James comes into it and does all those sorts of things around that thing. Whereas I do the marketing strategy. So I look at your best platform for you on social media. And there's also, you know, advertising offline as well, which we also do through our business. And we help our clients grow that way because we believe networking is really key and pivotal to any business that, and networking is not dating. It is not calling someone and going, hey, let's, how you going? I got your card. Want to buy off me? That is not networking. It never has been networking. People just think it is. Networking and sales kind of go hand in hand in the business world. And it's not what it's about. Um, you know, it's about building real connections and really developing those over a long period of time, which is why it can take up to two years for your business to grow when you leave permanent employment. Um, now, we have six children aged two to 12. So that's two, four, eight, who has autism. Our eight year old has autism. Uh, we have a 10 year old, we have an 11 year old with ADHD um, and mild autistic behaviors. And we have a 12 going on 21 year old. And anybody out there that's listening that has a 12 year old will know exactly what I'm saying, especially if they're a girl. Um, like my 12 year old, we've got five, four girls and two boys. So life here can get really hectic. Um, I'm also at university studying a law degree as well. Um, and I'm quite busy. I do like crafting, so I do get some downtime because I'm really quite, um, what's the word? I'm trying to think of a positive word to describe it. Dantic, organized, super duper organized, I think is probably a better word than the word I was thinking of. Um, so, you know, it is about being really organized with our lives, especially because we are so busy. We're that blended family. So on top of running the business and James and myself both being at university, we also have the complexities that go with being a blended family, um, which is very, very interesting. And those listeners that are a blended family will understand that where, you know, you're, you play the role of mum, but you're not really mum, or you play the role of dad, but you're not really dad. Um, and that, as you said, you know, trying to run a business and a family without killing each other, it's a really, really important thing because <laughs> James and I spend pretty much a lot of time together. Like we live together and we work together and we drive together and we do a lot of things together <laughs> and then we have date nights together as well. So, you know, you do tend to get sick of the person that you're living and working with occasionally. However, in saying that, that what works really well for us is that when it's business, it very much is business. And then when we're at home, you know, we have certain rules, like we turn off the phones at five, no business between the hours of five and eight o'clock, because that's family time. Yeah. Um, and that's what we show small businesses how to do, is some of that stuff around. So what I was saying was, you know, that's what we do. We show you how to organize your lives as well. And all that stuff is part of that marketing, like how you talk about your business to others, how your partner talks about your business to others. It's most people don't see how that can be marketing, but it really is because the way that your partner speaks about you in business and the way you speak about your partner in their business, that all helps it to grow because that's word of mouth and it's putting it out there. So you need to make sure that those relationships are really quite positive. Um, 
and that they work really well. We're big believers that if things aren't going right at home, then they can't go right in the business. Because it's about that self-care as well. And that's really, really important. That probably comes from my background in counselling as well. Mm. That we do a little bit of that self-care stuff with some of our clients. It's not exactly coaching. It's not really counselling. But it's, you know, talking to them about, well, what else do you have in your lives? Besides your business, besides your kids, what else do you have for you? Like, where's your downtime? Where's your time to go, okay, this is just me and I'm raw and I can relax and I can do this because that's really important as well, I think, for all business owners to have is that downtime. Absolutely. Yeah, I have to agree. The um, ground rules are so very important uh, and holding each other accountable to those ground rules because if you don't, that's when things fall over. Absolutely. They hold me accountable to that stuff all the time. Like, consistently. Uh, Great stuff. All right. So this is quite an interesting um, setup and the way you guys have, um, you know, come together. And that's the reason why you've earned the title, the dynamic duo right here. Now, James, you did mention um, earlier on when you started while you introduced yourself that, you know, some people do not realize the small things that actually, um, you know, constitute um, that the, the, what's needed, especially on a strategic level for a business to be functional and for it to be profitable and to actually maybe start, um, you know, generating some sort of income. Um, you did mention that you work with people organically and then you show them those little gaps. Like in a nutshell, what sort of um, things don't people really look at? Say Sally just quits her job today and already expects to make it big on Instagram tomorrow. Um, what sort of loopholes are people not taking into account that you help them sort of see uh, on their journey to creating a business that's profitable and enjoyable? Well, I can use an example of what we went through. Um, we're the biz we are the people that's supposed to think of everything, right? Uh, we're supposed to be the experts. We think of everything. And we stuffed up when we started out. We didn't look at the trademark. Ooh, okay. We, didn't, we had a trademark issue. So our business name that we started out with is not the name we have today. And the reason being is that when we got you know, talking to lawyers about our contracts and everything for our clients, they reviewed our... Um, the other business compliance issues that we had and found that there was an issue with um, our name that we had and right. that other people held the trademark over the name we had. Yeah, so we didn't own publishing rights over the name and we didn't think to check it. Um, we didn't think it was all that important. We were like, oh, why do we need to trademark? We'll be right. We'll just pick a name and our kids picked our name because our kids drew a whole heap of names out of the hat and our previous business name was almost going to be Kitty Lovers, but I'm glad they didn't draw and that one out of the hat. They Fluffy Bunny as and well. Fluffy Bunny, so that was good. It's probably not the best name for a marketing and business solutions firm, Fluffy Bunny. All right. Um, and, yeah, we just didn't look into the trademarking and then we had to do a rebrand and go through a new name. Our name now is Oakden. We hold the trademark to Oakden because that was one of the first things we did. So it's something so minor, I think, and minute, James, isn't it? Really? It is. It is. People yeah. Mix. And the business structure as well, like whether being a sole trader compared to being a company compared to having a trust set up and what, or a partnership and what's going to really work best for you as well. Isn't well, it? Yeah, you know, not considering contracts. what the risks are to the business. Mm -hmm. um, or another really common one that we come across with our clients is pricing strategies. Now, they turn around, not half of our clients turn around and go, I just thought that this was a decent way to charge people for what I did. Not actually thinking about overheads, overheads and everything that goes in to that price to make that business sustainable absolutely you raised um a really pertinent issue right there where a lot of people just start a business just because it feels right for them um without having checked against the viability of the name and also the sustainability um of you know the projects that they are going to be doing there now did that cost you 
a lot in terms of maybe lawsuits or the rebrand. I mean, it's okay if you feel like it's not important to, to, to venture into that. But obviously, if it is something worth warning people around, it will be something that, um, you know, we really need to, to, to stay clear off of. Definitely prosper. It didn't cost us anything in a lawsuit or anything like that. So what the issue was, was under our previous name was the trademark was purely for publishing rights. So okay. this person held the trademark on publishing rights only. We were able to get the name with, um, we were able to get an ABN, we were able to register the name with ASIC and everything else. None of that was an issue because it was only publishing rights. What we weren't allowed to do was publish blogs publish ebooks, e-guides, publish anything underneath that business name. Right. So whilst we decided, do you know what, we could still trade underneath this business name and just hope for the best and not get a cease and desist letter, or we could look at doing a rebrand, going through everything and going, you know what, we need to rebrand so we do own publishing rights. And now we own all the rights to Oakgen. And, you know, we've got a really lovely story um, underneath our previous brand name it was about getting um taking a business to the next step one stone at a time and building a business and underneath our new name oak gen it's really about setting those foundations like those foundations of a big oak tree um that you need for your business and leaving your business to the next generation which is more so what we're all about so i think james we're really happy aren't we that yeah. we had that we stuffed up we stuffed up we're happy that we did because we wouldn't be where we are today but the cost involved in, in, that rebranding. in with the rebrand wasn't was just the money in the bank to outlay to cover the cost of the marketing strategy, the, um, the banners, logo design, business ban uh, banners, business cards, all the um, uh, stuff along those lines. It set us back by three months because no one knew who we were. We had this profile that was growing really quickly yeah and then we disappeared overnight wow. which is what happens with rebrands which is why it's better if you're going through a rebrand to do it earlier rather than later unless you're like a massive corporation somewhere like you know westpac or you've got that customer loyalty base there already because you do have to put out the name and then you have to explain the story about why you're changing your name and those sorts of things as well especially for Absolutely. Yeah. I, I really, really, really appreciate you coming up with this because need, needless to say, we're here to live, we're here to learn, we're here to contribute. And we normally would not experience everything else in order to learn the lessons that we're meant to be learning. And this is quite an expensive lesson that if people get it right, right from the get go, they won't have to go through um, what it is that you guys went through out there. So thank you so yeah. much for sharing that, that aspect. Yeah, as well. Um, it was a month long battle with Facebook to change the name of our, uh, our Facebook page from one business name to the other. Right. Because right. do then they think you're stealing somebody's IP. Yeah, and they think that you're confusing your audience by changing your name. So a lot of the time, Facebook don't let you change your business page name either. So which is why it's really important to have your business name registered first and to have that with ASIC yeah. done prior to setting up your Facebook page. Because once your name's up there and once your reviews are up there, you can't transfer your Facebook reviews to a different page. Um, we were quite lucky because we had our certificate of registration with ASIC. We had trademark our ABN trademark application that was approved. We had our um, ABN number that had stayed the same as well. So that was evidence for Facebook that, yes, we were this company and now we're this company um, because they requested all of that information from us before they'd look at doing that. So now we always advise people that we see on the um business pages um you know that when they go oh give me some help for a startup i'm trying to start up my business what what do i do the first thing i always say is look at your name look at your brand you know how are you going to protect that look at your facebook page look at your capital james you always mention capital and cash flow and yeah um absolutely business viability assessments as well so james will also do a business viability yeah, sorry. We'll both do mouth. that because there's marketing. A there's... business viability mm. assessment um, on any new business that you're looking at starting. So James will take care of the business strategy side of that. 
and I'll look into, you know, things like your competitor and that competitor analysis, your reports, what industry you're going in. I mean, there's no point opening up a cafe in the middle of the field because you're Absolutely. not going to get there. So Absolutely. You, you makes it makes total sense. It, it makes total yeah. sense. Now, Angelique, when, when we started, when you were introducing yourself, you did mention that you help people clarify um, their why when they're starting a business. And I would suppose you would have heard of Simon Senek, who came up with the whole Start With Why Foundation, where he says that that is the golden uh, sort of rule that people don't care what you do, but they care why you do that. Now, how do you sort of walk through people in order for them to be able to articulate um, that within their business so that um, it's actually profitable and they can actually enjoy working in it? Yeah, so what I do with people is when we're looking at the why, because there is this trend now in marketing that it's not, as you said, you know, it's not what you do, it's who you are. Yeah. Um, I also think a big part of who you are, though, I look at perception branding um, and what perception branding is or what we define perception branding to be is how you're perceived by your market. How is your business perceived? How are you perceived in all of your interactions with people? How are you perceived? So do they think you're dumb? Do they think you're smart? Do they think you're dodgy? Do they think you're spammy? Do they think you're salesy? You know, and we go from there. So if somebody is starting out where they go, okay, I've got this great idea. I really, really want to do this. I don't ask them why. I go, why do you want to do that? Because if I ask you, Prosper, why you're doing what you're doing, you'll probably go, because I like it. Or I don't know. It's generally the two answers we get. Because I like it. Because I don't know. I didn't want to work for somebody else. Or so number three on the list is, I thought it was a good idea at the time. Yes. Yeah. There are lots of stories we can bring up about that, but it's probably not appropriate for the show. Um, so, you know, the thing about the why is where I start is I start with their career when I go through it with my perception branding um, toolkit. I go, what were you doing before you were doing this? Tell me where you started. How did you get your start in business? What were your passions? And then I go, okay, so you're passionate about this. You're passionate about helping people be visible. You're passionate about finance and really explaining how people can buy their own house. So what do you sell to them? And I go, oh, well, I sell them mortgage loans. I go, well, no, you actually don't. You sell people dreams. I go, well, how do you figure that? I'm like, because every Australian's dream is to buy a new house and to be living debt free. So what you're actually selling them is their idea of their dream. And when I did speak about that with a client just recently, they went, oh, okay, so I don't just help them get out of debt. I, I look at selling them their dreams. I go, yeah, you do, because that's what you're doing. So it's less about, it's sort of less about the products or the services that you're offering to people. And I take them through that process around, it's less about that and more about why you're doing it. What do you want the outcome to be from somebody coming into your service from the first time they contact you to the time they leave you, where do you want that to be? So that's where we start with the why and how I get down to people's why and why they're doing what they're doing and where do they see their business and themselves in like 10 years time? Do they see them sold living on the Cayman Islands or, you know, what do they want to be doing? Do they want to stay local? Do they want to go national? Do they want to go um, international? And it's really, you know, because those things are important, I think, when you're trying to define your why. Because your why for the Australian audience is obviously different to your why for the international market. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's really, really important. Because if people don't understand the reason why they should uh, participate in any of your sales, you know, literature or any of that stuff, then if you're not going to be helping them, then yes, definitely. Why would they want to buy from you? So I really, really appreciate that um, response right there. Now, James, part of the things that you help people with is actually, um, you know, help them consolidate um, or find out where they're missing out on their cash flow, right? And making yes. sure that, you know, because cash is the lifeblood of um, any business out there. And usually the process that you um, have mentioned that you take people through is to make sure that these people um, that are starting out their business or if they're a family business, they 
actually um, have cash flow plans to ensure that their business continues to grow and remains profitable in this challenging global um, economy. What, what is it that you touch on, especially when it comes to the cash um, aspect of a business and how it can remain viable? So, Prosper, the first thing is um, that planning is key. Um, well-known saying is that if you uh, fail to plan, you plan, plan to fail. I like that um, statement. <laughs> now, the easiest way to um, prevent any, any issues with cash flow is having a business plan. A lot of people just go, I don't need a business plan because I don't need a loan. And it's like, well, that's not what the business plan's for. That's what you can use it for, but that's not the reason you should have a business plan. You should have a business plan as a living, breathing, working document that you're consistently reviewing on a regular basis, particularly when you're a startup, so that you can keep on track with everything. When something's not going right, you go back, you have a look at your plan, and chances are you've written your plan correctly now, there's something that you haven't followed that's in that plan. Now, and with cash flow, there's three different factors for a business where cash flow is going to fall down. You either haven't made enough sales, so there's a sales or a marketing issue, or you're spending too much, your opposite heads are too high, or you've got a planning issue, something where it doesn't matter how many sales you make, you're just going to multiply your problem because you haven't followed the plan or you don't have a plan. I, or absolutely, or your business plan. I absolutely love that. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. That was beautiful. Thank you so much, James, um, you know, for, for that response right there. Now, Angelique, when you were uh, starting the show, you did mention um, an aspect that a lot of people find um, you know, very hard to tackle, which happens to be networking. And you did also elaborate that just picking up people's business cards and trying to follow up with them, that's not um, networking. So you have redefined that for a lot of people who just thought going to an event and grabbing as many business cards as possible. And when you run out of your own business cards, you start writing on top of other people's business cards just so that he kept the, uh, the trend going. Um, right. Explain yeah. to us what you actually meant and how you help people to actually connect with other businesses so that they can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Okay, so what we have here at Oakgen is what we call our strategic partnership program, which is a free program that we offer to any business owner um, to look at partnering with us. Now, when we say partnering, we don't mean financially partnering or anything like that. We mean that when we're sitting down in front of a client, we know that our strategic partners offer a great service, they're affordable, they do quality work. So they're not somebody that just goes, oh, here's a card, I do this and a bit of this and I'm a jack of all trades and, you know, these people are experts in their field. And most importantly, they share the same values. Yeah, which is really important to look at when you are networking to align yourself and you're looking at building a strategic partnership program within your business to align yourself with people that do share your values. There was a question that was posed the other day, and I know a lot of other people in the Queensland business community are talking about this, that if you were offered an opportunity to get up and speak on stage with a company that didn't align your values, but it was your ideal audience, would you do it? Now, lots of people go, yes, because it's my ideal audience, so why wouldn't I do it? And then other people go, well, no, because I don't want to be aligned with that person because I know that there's something dodgy about them or I don't want my brand aligned. So, you know, it's one of those really important ethical questions. So my question then is, why wouldn't you approach your network in the same way? So if you wouldn't get up and speak in front of somebody else's audience where you don't align with their brand, why would you go take a business card with them and then go refer business to them? If you don't know who they are, you don't know about their business, you haven't spent the time to develop those relationships with them from that point of view that you know how they work. You know that if you're going to send a client to them, they're actually going to pick up the phone and go, hey, James, you sent that client to me. Um, just met with them. Listen, they were great. Is there any info I need to know? 
And then James and Mike go, oh, yeah, you know what? They don't have a business plan. They have some cash flow issues. And I go, you know what, James, that's great because I'm a bookkeeper. I can help them, you know, keep their books. Would that be useful? And then what you end up doing for your clients is building like this fantastic network around them, like a matrix, I guess it is, isn't it? It's more like yeah. a network matrix where they know that if they call you about cash flow, that they then, you know, if you get their permission, they go, you know, do you mind if I just pass this conversation on to the accountant, that you're all working collaboratively. Because in the small business community, that is what it's about, working in collaboration with everybody else. And networking should be about that as well. I mean, we network with our competitors. I have three or four, well, four or five, sorry, I'm just looking at my calendar now. I have five people in my network that are our direct competitors. And they work in a different target market to us, but I've networked with them. They're fantastic business owners. They're really great at what they do. They provide a great service. They provide something similar to what we do, but not in the same way that we do. So obviously if I see a client and I go, you know what, you're going to be better suited to this person's style, I'm actually helping that business. Because I'm going, you're not suited to me. You might be my ideal client, but you might not be my ideal personality. But hey, I know somebody perfect. Cool. And then what happens next time is that, that then that person will then go, oh, okay, well, you know, I wasn't great for you, but I was great for this person. So let's pass that back around. But now I need this and you can give that to me. And then they come back. So for us, networking is, you're right, it's not card collecting. It is, you know, going to a networking event, doing your 30-second pitch. Um, James and I have a networking event coming up on Monday at the Record Creek Hotel. Um, where we're doing our networking masterclass, which teaches you how to take the sales out of your networking pitch because sales is not networking. Networking is about relationship development and building those strong connections with people. It is about follow-up. It is about, you know, going, hey, can we meet for a coffee? Not about sending a LinkedIn request going, hey, I met you at that networking thing three weeks ago. Let's connect on LinkedIn. Now let me spam you to go like my Facebook page. That is not networking. That is just literally being spammy and being really salesy and pretty much, I don't know if I can say it, but I'm going to say it. Maybe you might want to edit it out later, but it's pissing people off. Absolutely. It's what it's doing. It's, you know, it's, that's why people don't go to networking because there are people like that that go collect your card. All of a sudden you're added to their mailing list and you're getting 30 emails from them a week and you go, Hey, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't give you my business card to send me this. And then you go unsubscribe and you never work with that person again. So oh. that person that's spamming you might have a really great business, but you wouldn't know it because now all of a sudden your perception of them is that they're salesy, they're spammy, they're dodgy, you don't want to have anything to do with them. Absolutely. And I so really, that, really... Does that explain it? I Hopefully that explains it for the viewers a little bit more about why networking is not just card collecting. It's not just making a sales call and, hey, buy from me, I met you at that thing. It's, you know, it's like making a new friend is how I like to do it. You wouldn't say to your new friend, hey, go buy me a beer. I've just met you, but buy me a beer. You know, that takes time to build to get to that point. It takes time to build to get there. And that's what we're all about here. Our tagline is actually real people, real connections for realistic solutions. And we stand behind that brand. We really believe in it because that's what helped us grow our brand. I mean, six months ago, people in the small business community had no idea who I was, no idea who Marky Mama was. And James and I grew that through network. Absolutely. I really, really appreciate that because a lot of people like buying stuff, but people don't like being sold to. And that really clarifies that whole um, gist right there. And um, James, you've got your own take. Um, when it comes to this networking, you've uh, formulated your own dad's networking group there in Brisbane. Tell us a little bit about that and how you're connecting, um, you know, the dadpreneurs out there that are doing it all and actually creating businesses for themselves that are profitable and enjoyable. Yeah, I founded, oh, it would have been maybe three months ago, I founded the uh, Dads and Business Network. It's in Brisbane. So, um, Ultimately, I want this to be a nationwide uh, thing uh, to uh, take off. Um, and it's about supporting dads who uh, own or run a business. They might have started up or they might have been in business for quite a while. Um, 
men don't talk about how they're feeling, how they're doing, and when they are looking for something, they still don't talk about it, but they like to just surround themselves with other people who might be feeling the same way, experiencing the same things, and typically uh, just get into a social scene where they're with like-minded people. Um, and so we've set this up, it's a safe space where whatever's going on for you, you can come along, you sit down, you have lunch, have a beer, if you like. Yes, it is during the workday, but... And you can bring your kids as well. If you yeah, have and, and if it's a situation where um, you've got the kids on the day, bring the kids along. We're at a, in a hotel that has a kid's playroom, so there's a place to keep the kids occupied as well. Um, and we have events, we're planning events for the year where there's family days on a weekend, on a Saturday or a Sunday, where you bring your whole family if you want to. And you can meet our bunch of six. Yeah. Um, so the concept is, yes, it's about building a network. And, but my thing was, you know what? I want to get more friends into my network with people who are going through the same things I'm going through. It's not easy, right? Having a family, running a business, um, studying, dealing with everything else that's going on as well. Um, so, and totally different to be talking about it with your partner as it is to be speaking to someone else who's going through it from the same perspective you are. Absolutely. I absolutely love that idea. And if ever you're going to be doing that in Victoria, please let me know because it is something that I'll definitely jump onto because, you know, um, I don't know if you've mentioned this or you've alluded to this, but people actually do business with those they know, like, and trust. And if you're going to be working around with people, um, you know, going through the same journey, sometimes, like you say as well, your partner might not actually understand what it is you're going through or there's certain things that you can't really relay or discuss with the partner, um, you know, for fear of, you know, creating an imbalance within that relationship. So it is a really good initiative that people can actually jump on board um, and, and, and um, be a part of that. Now, how can people... Um, um, first of all, uh, find, um, you know, uh, Orkgen and, you know, um, eventually the business groups and also uh, some of the events that you're doing out there in Brisbane. Either one of you guys can answer this question. Um, Prosper, can I just say on, just before we go into that, just really quickly, um, that the Dads in Business group that James runs is, is also free for dads to come and it does provide that safe space. So they're not being sold to from Oakden. We're not going, hey, buy a business plan, come along to lunch. Um, it's really about supporting other dads in business and men in business, kind of like your men sheds with tools, but a men shed for business people. Like for business and people. And dads as well. So they buy their own lunch, you buy your own beer, hell if you want to shout James a beer, I'm sure he wouldn't be opposed to that. <laughs> You know, just um, not five people shouting your beer not, at once. <laughs> yeah, that might cause some issues at home. <laughs> so, um, you know, and and you can. We had somebody that attended the dad. I don't go to the dads in business because that's James's space. That's his safe space there to go and talk about how he doesn't want to kill me in our business. <laughs> Um, you know, that's his safe space to be able to do that. And it's just that really supportive environment. I think he had somebody that came along the other day that brought the mother with them, their elderly mother with them, that um, this entrepreneur cares for because his wife was at work. So he brought his elderly mother along and she sat there and she had lunch and everything else. And, you know, that wasn't an issue or anything like that. So it's a really open and really supportive group that we want to sort of kick off the ground because we just, we feel so passionately about it, don't we, James? Yeah, we do. Really? And I mean, yeah. there's lots of women's groups out there as well for women in business, for mums in business as well. And I think we just wanted to provide this space with James being a stepdad and a dad, which is a massive challenge for anyone to, you know, really connect because that journey, as I'm sure you'd know, of being an entrepreneur can be quite lonely at times. And you sort of want the, that space there to connect with other people in that same headspace as well to talk about some of those challenges, as you were saying, that you can't necessarily discuss with your partner for fear of an argument or whatever it might be, or you don't want them to, you know, don't want to burden them with anything else as well. So that's what that space is really about. 
And we also don't have um, guest speakers that come along either. So it's really just a casual catch up, networking, hey, how are you going? This is how it is. So I just, I just wanted to be really clear in case there were any listeners um, or viewers out there that wanted to possibly come along or contact us. Um, you can contact myself on Marketing Mama. So that's M-A-R-K-E-T-I-N-G-M-U-M-M-A on Facebook, um, which is my personal brand. We also have uh, Oakgen, O-A-K-G-E-N on Facebook and James L website. Uh, so is, no, it it's www.oakgen.com.au and Dads in Business Network, there's a Dads in Business Network uh, group uh, just called Dads in Business Network on Facebook. Look it up. I send their request to join. There's a couple of questions to ask, uh, to answer and uh, we'll let you in. Um, I don't know if I can say it, and possibly you might need to edit this out. Um, but the Dads and Business Network also has a no dickheads policy, so um, we're not out to have people um, getting into things that are not positive and constructive for other people in the group. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. There's no point in trying to take that away. I mean, obviously, this has been fun. Um, you guys really are doing tremendous things out there in Brisbane and helping other people be doing, have a happier existence, especially on the dad's part and growing their businesses so that they can be profitable and enjoyable. And if you're watching this show right now, you would appreciate that Angelique and James have loads to offer, especially their startup journey on how their, um, they had trademark issues and how you can actually avoid that pitfall in order for you not to uh, be faced with either a lawsuit or bills when you have to rebrand and how you can actually coordinate with your partner or with family to actually, um, you know, not <laughs> kill each other right there. Now, I mean, obviously, Angelique or James, either you guys can pick this question out here. Um, there's quite a lot that you have learned, first of all, from the business front, from the family front, from the networking front, communication, all aspects of business are prevalent in um, your existence there. What's probably your go-to advice for somebody who is starting a business with either their spouse or with family or, you know, they've got kids around them as well, um, just so that they can keep their, um, you know, head above the water, so to speak. So for me, from my perspective, I tell people to look after themselves first. Self-care. Self-care. You can't look after yourself then nothing else is going to matter. Great. You can't give up what you don't have. So if you don't love yourself, you can't extend that love to your family. If you don't exactly. love yourself, you can't extend that love to your clients as well. You can't run from an empty cup. Absolutely. I absolutely love that. I absolutely love that. Now, I can't thank you enough, uh, Angelique and James, for your time that you've spent with us and the knowledge and the depth that you have uh, taken us through, especially on this episode here. And I really am uh, positive that um, th that one person who watched this video right now has taken not only a nugget, but actually a friend in quotes um, out of the two of you because of you know, the generosity and the value that you've given us on the show today. Thank you so much and um, really wish you all the best with all the endeavors that you guys are going out uh, there to do to help others as well. Thank you very much, Prosper. It's been really enjoyable for James and I. Thank you, Prosper. Absolutely. Thank you for your time today. Uh...